Good morning, lovely people. Um, how are you doing? This is uh, your weekly Facebook Live um, Yoga Solutions broadcast. I, I must confess, I, I'm feeling <laughs> way out of my um, comfort zone for two reasons. One, I'm indoors. Um, I'm just in my amazing garden. Uh, although I have the doors wide open, and in a, and um, so I can wistfully gaze out in that direction every now and again. So if you see me do that, it's not because I'm being distracted, it's because I'm trying to center myself. Um, and the other reason is I haven't had much time to practice this morning. So, um, but uh, uh, yes, okay. So let's see what we've got here. Good morning, Gail. Oh, you're in, <laughs> you're in the beats, uh, Ibiza, well done. Congratulations, have a lovely time. And <laughs> the taps have. So what we've got here. Uh, for a question from Lynn. Oh yes, yes. Uh, I, I already re I've um, this set me up this morning actually. So thank you for the question, Lynn. Um, uh, hello, Mark. I hope you're well. I was wondering if you could do something with shoulders and arms. I've a few injuries from climbing. Okay. So um, yes, I was happy about that because um, shoulders um, are a common thing. So, um, so that, what that prompted me to do this morning was to uh, look for my bones. Uh, I, I used to be much more anatomical, and I used to carry around a load of bones um, to show people uh, how things articulate and how they can move. Because uh, a, lo a lot of the um, uh, Gail, more on being who we are. Ah, okay. Not sure I can cover that in half an hour, but. Um, Yes, that that's uh, that's really up my street, Gal. Um, I think that's why we're doing yoga. How, in order to become who we are. Um, I think we don't know who we are. Because, um, I think we're more of a kind of product of our history, um, things that we imagine have happened to us or have experienced, you know. Uh, ideas, programming, all sorts of things, and I, I think yoga is the is a a method, a means to um, tune into our true nature by giving the mind something direct to to um, listen to that is related to nature, and that thing that we get the mind to listen to directly is our bodies. Our bodies are. Um, <clears throat> An integral part of nature. Um, it's our minds that have separated. So, yes, um, yes, yeah, so that's a kind of deeper subject. Uh, I'm not sure I can teach that on Facebook Live, but um, yeah, that's I think that's where it's at really. Uh, I, I I truly believe in the body's intelligence. Um, as in, you know, when I started this yoga journey as an adult, I came to it at 30. Um, hi, Lynn. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a look at shoulder shoulder stuff if uh, you just turned up. Um, oh, hi, Emily. Nice to see you. Um, I'm just talking, uh, I'm just answering Gail's question about becoming more who we are. And um, it's, t it's taking up a bit of time because this, uh, this lights my fire a bit, this question. Um, but what I was saying was... Um, that, that's what I think yoga is all about. It, it's about, um, I think we can discover who we are through the body. And uh, if the body's not comfortable, that's quite a disturbing thing to uh, be with. But uh, my direct experience, uh, hi Chris, nice to see you. My direct experience of the, the relationship to uh, the body um, you know, when I came to yoga at 30, my body was in, was giving me a lot of jip, uh, was the way I saw it. My body was in a lot of pain. I was in a lot of pain because of my body was what I thought. Um, turns out it was me that was giving the body a lot of pain. It was the, it was the way, um, I looked at life. It was the way I did things. It was the, um, the way I breathed, the way I moved. And all these things were unraveled through the yoga process. And in unraveling the impo imposed complications uh, of the personality, I could peel away the layers of imposition 
and um, <clears throat> in the process become more myself. And I, I think this has got to be the purpose of yoga. It's got to be. Because otherwise, uh, uh, it's an exercise otherwise. You know, it's great. But um, uh, I don't know. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, yeah, it's a bit deep for not having practiced. <laughs> Don't feel quite validated in being able to spout such stuff. But um, um, yes, uh, I'll, uh, thank you, Lynn, for giving me the shoulder question. Um, if you have any details about what it is you've injured when you were climbing. Hello, my darling. Uh, that, that's Abigail I'm talking to. <laughs> Although you're all my darlings on, on some level. But uh, that's my partner, Abigail. Um, I had to throw me a bit, sorry. What was I saying? Oh yes, uh, the, yeah, Lynn. If you've got any details about the shoulder injury, that might help me uh, give you a specific answer. But what I what I've been occupying myself with this morning was, apart from tidying up the flats to make it look um, okay for people, um, was uh, I got out my skeleton um, because um, uh, I want to help people understand what shoulders are. Um, th th this is. Uh, this is how your skeleton comes. It's all it's all screwed together against the ribs, and it's sort of a fixed thing. And uh, people tend to use their shoulders like this. They they tend to pull their shoulders back, and they tend to pull the shoulders down. And doing so restricts breathing, and they get shoulder problems <laughs> uh, because it's not how a shoulder works. Um, so um, uh, yeah, I got out the drill and um, and D de screwed de bolted the the other shoulder girdle here and just put a couple of straps on it um you know one one goes up here and that will be uh, what's that um can't remember now um this one's the latissimus this would be something a bit like the latissimus dorsi if you want to know fancy names but um the essence of a shoulder girdle is that it's a wing it's a wing and uh that's the wrong arm but um you know uh, I've got the wrong arm in the, in the, in the socket there. But um, it needs to be able to move as a wing. So you're looking at the shoulder from the back there, okay? And so it detaches from the back. It's nothing to do with the back, really, apart from, apart from the tensions that we feel of holding the shoulder back and down, which is uh, actually the problem. It needs to be free to move like a wing, and, and it pivots from here. So, um, uh, uh, okay, so you've, you've, I think you've just pulled the arm out of the socket, Lynn, that's what it sounds like. Um, <clears throat> but any, anyway, this is uh, help that finding this first will be useful because, um, th and this is a common problem, people, people that have shoulder problems generally have them because they are trying to stretch their shoulders. And when they stretch their shoulders, they kind of pull the arm out of the shoulder socket and it's a, it's a vulnerable joint. Um, you know, if you try and stretch your shoulders, you get that hung shoulder look. But what you're doing is you're sort of tugging on the joint. What, what we want to do is to put the arm bones back in the socket. And I'm guessing, Lynn, that if you did this with climbing, you fixed the shoulder blade and you pulled with your arm, and doing so would pull the arm and the shoulder blade apart. Oops. <laughs> Just talking about it like that's made. Um, Yes, you've lost your wings and have been hanging off it. Yes, I know. Um, it's a it's a common habit. It's it's the idea. Um, it's the idea of uh, relaxing your shoulders um, as a back and down thing. It's, it's, um, I don't know. There's reasons for that, but it's 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 a very simplistic idea that creates a lot of problems. So if you can imagine your um, for everyone, if you can imagine your shoulder girdle as this wing that pivots at your chest look at all the space you get underneath it for breathing um, that's the key and um, to redress the the idea that shoulders pull back and down which uh, sorry back and down which causes a lot of the problems it sort of forces the chest up and restricts breathing if you look at that you know. um, to redress that idea if you can think of the space between your wing, which includes this thing here. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> uh, I only just screwed it together this morning. So let's put it back together you know, if I can. There it is. Good. Okay. So it includes this uh, space underneath here. 
if you can think of your your shoulder girdle as as a breathable space between your wing and your ribs um, then you will have a different experience of shoulders okay without that you are already pulling your up your shoulders back and down away from the arm so you, the use of the arm involving any kind of outward action will pull the arm out of the socket it's the wing that does that it's the wing that that sends the arm forwards okay and it wants to send it from almost from underneath so you don't um so you don't um sort of do it with a, a, a tightness across the neck okay without to pull on the neck so when you when you bring an arm forwards you want to bring it forwards from your shoulder girdle bring it from your shoulder girdle not pull your shoulder girdle back and down and try and pull your arm out because that creates a big problem okay and then the thing that's going to help you then i've been giving way too much information so i'm running out of time um the thing that's going to help you is getting the forces to go back through the the arm um i've got the heating on so i'll do taps off so you can see um so uh, uh, I think you should be able to see my shoulder girdle. So the thing that people do is they hang their shoulders off. Okay? They hang their arms off. And that tends to, tends to pull the top of the shoulder girdle forwards, the back of the bottom of the sh shoulder girdle back, so you hang off your spine. It might feel relaxing, but the arms are sort of almost dislocating from the shoulder socket. Um, what we want, excuse me, black hat, what we want is for um any weight or any 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 reason anything you can, you're using for support through the arms whether it's your elbows or whatever your hands needs to be able to allow the arm bones back into the wing into that corner so that you can feel the support that the bones offer you um and we don't want to be sort of pulling the arms out we want to be resting the arm bones back in and then if you can see the wings themselves and something that pivot from across the chest and the, the rest of the body the head through the spine through the ribs um, is almost a separate entity it's a, apart from the pivoting across the chest it's almost a separate entity then you can find the space underneath that to, to breathe and then when you release the breath it's not excuse me cat when you release the breath it's not the shoulders that pull down it's the ribs that empty away from the head it's the ribs that empty away from the wings to get you to release the spine in the other direction so you get you get a sense of how it's not the shoulders that do this you know it's not the shoulders that do this the shoulders are an interface between the use of the arms and the space around you and the touch and the rest of the body which is the head the ribs the spine down to the feet so if you could, if you can uh, play with this have, a, have everyone have a go maybe bring the elbows to the ground that means i have two minutes if you bring the elbows to the ground you can follow my instructions now if you if you've been watching um sort of all fours elbows knees and what we want is we want the spine um the bump of the base of the neck the spine down to the heart from there to be as close to the elbows as possible so that you're not um pulling up with your spine away from the ground but the arm bones become the support now if you pull your shoulders down your back then you'll be sagging your back uh, that's your the shoulder blades pulling down into your lower back um to sort of pu pull you up at the front what you need to do is to have the wings broad and quite high up so that you can use the arms to support back through the shoulder corners and then um, it's just experiencing that togetherness in the shoulder corners and you know you can if you've got your elbows on the ground you might be able to just reach around and feel and make sure it's not creating undue tension around the spine and that sort of thing neck and then the job is to breathe 
breathe into the space that, that this arrangement gives you. And then when you release the breath, it'll be the ribs that empty away from the arms as you use them. So the elbows go down, the wrists go down. And the action of putting the forearms down sends you back away from the forearms through the upper back ribs as well as the chest. So the elbows go down, the upper back ribs move away from the head. The wrists go down, the chest moves away from the head. And the wings. The body sort of unfolds in the opposite direction towards the um, release of the legs behind you. So, um, uh, in principle, uh, if, if, if your injury was a, a thing that pulled the arm out of the socket, then um, using the arms in that way should have been uh, not in the least bit painful. In fact, if anything, it should have relieved everything. Um, because uh, that, that's one of the, another aspect of body intelligence is when you when you start to um, treat it with uh, respect, treat it uh, in the uh, treat the joints in the way that they are meant to function, then uh, the body stops giving you um, pain signals. Um, okay, so. Um, well, let me know if that was any use to you, Lynn, and anyone else out there. Um, I hope it. I hope it was handy <laughs> in some fashion. I hope it was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the idea. Um, it, maybe even just if you're just watching, you like the anatomy of it, uh, looking at the bones of it. Um, don't really like to call it anatomy. Uh, uh, yep, I felt aquaviva kicking in. Great, good. That's always a good sign. <laughs> So, um, yes, uh, I think that's me. Um, I'm coming up to Edinburgh, uh, 20th of October. It's a Friday. It's an afternoon joint clinic workshop. So, Lynn, if you want to come along to that, you get the Aquaviva rate. Um, uh, what's that? Uh, and, any, you know, any of, our, any of the Aquaviva students do that. Um, yes, yeah, fr Friday afternoon at Santosha, 21 Albert Street in Edinburgh. Uh, we're moving our course over to... Um, Edinburgh um, and it'll be in place for the new intake in January for anyone that's interested in doing one of our yoga development and, and teacher development courses uh, following the weekend 28th 29th is it uh, we are again in Edinburgh we're doing we're doing a weekend of workshops and one-to-ones uh, I'm I'm teaching I'm holding the workshop on Saturday and Abigail will be assisting um, that will be a general one. <laughs> um, and then on Sunday, Abigail's running a workshop for women on pelvic health. Uh, it's only for women. Um, I'll still be there, though. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in another room doing one-to-ones if anyone wants to book direct with me. Um, a half-hour slot can change your life if, <laughs> if, you're, if you're wanting to do that with me. Um, yeah, that's about it. So um, I shall say... Is that, it? Is that it? I said everything. Oh yes, yeah, so I'm coming up to Lancashire in November to De Debbie Debbie from um, Farah's place. Um, looking forward to that weekend. That's the Guy Fawkes weekend, and then uh, that means my, that's my time. Um, and then I think it's the usual stuff. Uh, there's, there's Twickenham in in December. Oh, and I'll be coming up uh, once a month generally to Edinburgh on a Friday. Um, to do the joint clinic. Uh, it'll be my sort of uh, regular open workshop in uh, in Edinburgh, okay? So the next one, I think, is November the 17th, and I don't know. Anyway, th there's, all my, there's, there's all my dates. Um, yes, please. Well, what's the yes, please, to you, Gail? You, you, you're going to come to something. It'd be, it'd be nice to see you. I'll, I'll help you out with that ganglion if, you, if it's still going on. Or uh, help you use it to find the yoga, <laughs> other things. Um, I, in, the, in the meantime, I'll say namaste. Um, this wasn't so bad considering how out of my comfort zone I was. So namaste. Thank you very much. I shall see you same time next week. Um, I am thinking of, uh, just as an afterthought, I am thinking of putting on a Zoom training. I've been practicing with uh, some of the Aquaviva students. Oh, you're going to come for a one-to-one -one go. That's great. Okay, yes, I'll, I'll book you in. Just give me, um, uh, we'll sort that out. Um, yes, I'm thinking of putting on a Zoom training. It's a bit, it's a bit like this, only um, I'll be able to see the people that I work with. Um, I'm thinking of doing that in January. 
Um, I'll keep these going, of course, but um, it'll, be, it'll be a longer thing. It'll be a weekly thing, um, an hour, hour and a half, maybe, um, where I can respond directly to the people that I have in front of me. And I'll also be able to see you practicing, so I can be able to give you some hints. Um, this this would be a some, something people would have to book. Um, uh, before that, I might do a... A five-day challenge thing. This, uh, this seems to be a bit of a fad on Facebook, um, where I teach every day for twenty minutes or so. So anyway, um, yeah, okay, okay, Lynn. Um, think of the when you're pulling with the arm. Uh, so Lynn, Lynn said, "I'll let you know how my wings are in climbing." Uh, when you're pulling with the arm, make sure that the arm bone is hooked back into the shoulder, um, and you're not doing it with, so much with the shoulder blade. Okay, the arm is hooked into the shoulder and then the thing that w when you pull with the arm the thing you pull is the stuff on the inside so you you pull your insides up okay okay all right uh, that's enough i've gone way over time so i'll sign off this is mark j aquaviva of the aquaviva school of yoga signing off and i shall see you same time uh, same place next week bye now <laughs>